Hello, I'm here today with Eric Fish, Senior Vice President of Legal Services. He's with the Federation of State Medical Boards and he's going to be talking to us a little bit today about his organization and how they're using technology to change how things work. Thank you. Well, the Federation of State Medical Boards is the organization that represents the 70 state medical and osteopathic boards uh, who are charged by state law to regulate the practice of medicine within the various states. Uh, in that, we help build standards for uh, regulation, best practices. Uh, we also work with states on our data and other things uh, that are exchanged that really help improve the regulation of medicine for the patient, uh, the end user of, of medicine. Eric, can you tell us a little bit about how artificial intelligence and machine learning are impacting your organization and membership? Well, Lee, we're actually at a, uh, what I believe to be a crossroads of cultural, uh, social and technological change that are really going to change the way that uh, we have to look at regulation for the public benefit. Uh, there's going to be a lot more uh, data on patient provider interactions. There's also going to be much more data consumed by state regulators to see which of these uh, interactions comply with the standards. Uh, one of the things that I see developing out of this uh, AI and machine learning is that we're going to be creating much more data that can be mined as a regulator to see what interactions are good and which, uh, we, which interactions are bad. <coughs> Eric, can you tell us a little bit about how AI and machine learning are being implemented to improve transparency? Well, one of the things that's going to occur, uh, I believe, is that as patients and providers start turning to um, algorithms to help with that continuation of care, uh, really the people who implement these systems have to prove up to the regulators how these comply, how these algorithms, how other things are going to comply with the standards that are there. Uh, artificial intelligence has been in medicine for a long time. Uh, machine learning is a little bit new where we're taking uh, some of the discussions and building a, a knowledge base that's then going to be applied to the patient uh, experience. And it, regulation isn't standing in the way of these things. The, the regulations are there so that uh, they are done the right way and comply with the standards. And being transparent on that beginning end is a, is a really a, a great step towards complying with regulations and making the regulatory process better. Great. And so uh, you told me that your organization runs some services that consumers might want to be aware of. What, mm -hmm. what are those and what are they used for? Well, one of the things that uh, we do on behalf of our members is collate all the disciplinary and regulatory actions that are taken against uh, a provider. And we have a service called DocInfo where uh, a member of the public can go look to see if an action has ever been taken against their, uh, their physician. Uh, we have access to all 900,000 plus licensees and their information and it's uh, really a great service and use of data that we've collated and given out to the public. Great. Well, thanks for coming on today. I know you brought your colleague, Mike Dugan, uh, who's going to talk for a little bit. Thanks again for coming thanks, on Lee. the show. Thanks, Thank you. I have Eric's colleague, Mike Dugan. He's the CIO of the organization. And um, Mike, can you tell me a little bit more about some of the things you're doing to improve the quality of the data and integrity of sure. the information? Sure, Lee, thank you. The, uh, in many ways, we are a data aggregator, and this involves uh, the credentialing process for physicians. So we pull data from uh, national data sources, we pull data from institutions to verify a physician's uh, identity as well as their credentials, so the training and, and process that they've done. Historically, these have been very manual processes, but we've implemented technology to add additional data sources and also give us flexibility in how we consume data. Historically, it's been a very structured, we need a file in this format, and uh, our technology is still evolving, but we're working it to give us the flexibility to work with any data source available. What are the concerns that your members have regarding data breaches and the potential complications resulting from them? Well, I think they worry about that quite a bit, and if anyone in technology who deals with identity and has information, uh, if you're not worried about data breaches, then you're, uh, you're missing the point and, and uh, perhaps should be in another line of work. So we are given the trust of the physicians and our member boards that uh, when they give us their data that it will be protected and that it will be safeguarded and we work very hard to do that and proactively. So and, and I think that in, in this environment, in this day and age, that is an activity 
and a task that, that uh, we will do, uh, it will never go away. It will be ongoing and we'll have to adapt if there's new ways that are found to hack information. Uh, we always will have to improve our data security. Well, thanks a bunch for being on the show. I appreciate you taking time. Okay, thank you. Oh, thanks luck. for having us.